So lockdown is coming to an end here in the UK and we've been allowed to travel and see our family and friends and stay indoors. So for the bank holiday weekend we've come down to Thanet where I was not born but certainly raised and did all my schooling and now I'm making my way back to Somerset to get back in time for work with my wife staying on to see the family for a little bit longer. So I couldn't have picked two better days on the forecast at least it's going to be sunny light winds warm the winds of what there is going to be is going to be behind me pretty much the whole way home which if you travel west in the uk you rarely have a tailwind traditionally you would have a headwind that whole way home so i've set the warbird up with the 35 mil panaracer slicks because this is going to be all on road basically apart from a bit through the new forest and it's about 260 odd miles across the two days that i've got to try and get through i'm not bike packing in terms of bike camping anyway i've got some bags on my bike but um i've booked a hotel for tonight to get some what will no doubt be much needed rest and we're just coming into pegwell the route basically follows the coast so i'm going to head down towards dover it'll get a bit hilly around there but then it should flatten off again it's national cycle network too on Sustrans which basically just has me following the coastline if I keep the sea on my left and keep heading west I can't really go too far wrong although I may be asking for trouble on a bank holiday Monday I wonder if the beaches will be packed Sandwich in Kent easily one of the most beautiful parts of the route and we're scooting through now nice and early in the morning and it's dead dead quiet brilliant What a beautiful day. There's deliberately not much climbing in this route, but we've just done a tiny bit now, just gradually, gradually coming up and up onto the top of Dover before we descend down into Dover. So we're up on the hill. The weather is coolish at the moment, but warming up quite quickly. And we're not far off seeing the White Cliffs. Dover Seafront, busiest port in Europe at one point, don't know if it still is. And for a summer or two, I used to teach sailing instruction out of the hut on the beach, which has now been seriously upgraded. The guys have got far better facilities than I did when I was here last. Well, National Cycle Network 2 is rewarding us because it has been traffic free mostly, like the path we're on now straight up out of Dover it's quite a longish climb onto the top of the cliff here probably can't quite see the sea out there it's a bit milky bit of sea fog but now having climbed out of Dover uh, we've got this lovely long winding descent following the coast all the way down to Folkestone It's a pretty uh, well placed lookout point, isn't it? And actually, as far as this route goes, that's probably the worst of the climbing done for today anyway. Um, we're basically about to hit the coast in Folkestone. I think there was another little blip near Hastings, but otherwise we just stay virtually at sea level all the way along past Brighton. And then the plan tonight is to stay in Chichester. And then tomorrow the climbs will come in Dorset, no doubt. I've got nothing to do today but ride my bike, as Ryan Van Duzer would say. And I'm going to make the most of it. So what are we? 32 miles in? Stopping already. <laughs> but the flat whites look worth it. It's the furthest I've ever gone without a flat white. <laughs> So Rich is out with me for a bit longer into Lid. Yeah. Um, and then he's going to head back into the headwind. I've got no headwind today. <laughs> so uh, hopefully good progress to come. First coffee stop of the day done. A little breakfast on the top of the sun cream and now we're back on the National Cycle Network too. Biggest threat today will undoubtedly be people on these shared paths. They might hamper our progress a little bit, but hopefully that's where the bell 
comes in useful. It's a beautiful little uh, path, really nice. And this is what the National Cycle Network Route 2 looks like, the other side of Folkestone. Shared path again, so I've got to keep my wits about me. And it does hamper progress when there's dogs on leads and people everywhere, but it's very nice. Busy, busy. And it's probably only going to get busier. And later I've got to get across Brighton Seafront, which is going to have a similar feel, but with way more people at that time of day. My brother is definitely going to be cursing me on his road bike tyres. Making our way down to Lid now, which is probably famous for Dungeness Power Station, and that's about it. It is obscenely flat, which means we're actually making some good progress now. We're off the shared paths. This is proper road now, but they're pan flat and really quiet and nicely uh, tarmac. So we're actually making some good progress. My brother's gonna break off at Lid, head up towards Canterbury and head home. And then I'm on my own the whole way along the coast, but again, it should stay relatively flat. Just made it through Camber Sands along the front. And that's, um, it was quite a nice beach I used to go to for kite surfing, but it's not that amazing, but you wouldn't know it by the traffic trying to get in there. Absolute carnage. It was queuing for miles and miles and miles. The car parks were all full. People are walking in. It's first sunny day, I suppose, a sunny bank holiday in the UK and no one can go anywhere. They head to Camber Sands. But I'm through it now, so, I'm about to come into another little town. I'm not really sure where I am now. I remember Hastings being on the map. We're 62 miles in and I think a blip in elevation around about mile 70. So I'm expecting a climb to come up, but that should be it. I'm just hoping and praying that places like Brighton aren't as bad as what I've just been through, but we'll see. Whoa, more single track. Not particularly technical, but definitely not what my brother would have wanted on the road tires. So he'll be glad that he's peeled off and gone home and it's relatively quiet. I've just been through a very scenic town of Rye, which was far nicer than the Canberra experience just before it. But I am starting to crave open roads a little bit just to get a bit more progress. 155 miles today, and most of it on this sort of <laughs> terrain. So despite being relatively flat, it's gonna take some doing, but we're making good progress. I have just been up the most brutal hill, one of the most brutal I've ever been up. And now I'm descending down into Hastings. I managed to stop and refill the water bottles, get some chocolate, but I need some lunch or something now, something savory. I don't know if to stop in, in Hastings or not, truth be told. What on earth possessed me to think on the hottest day of the year that this would be the way to get home? Essentially, beach hopping and South Coast England resort hopping all the way back to Somerset. It's carnage. Oh, I'm through the worst of the carnage. I actually went onto the road for a large part of it. It was, it was chocker block on this cycle path. You would never have got anywhere. But now it is a bit easier. Still do have people looking where they're going, but they don't. And the sea looks rather inviting, but no time to rest and appreciate it. I need to get on. Through and out the other side. And here comes the train to ruin, ruin the shot completely. But thank goodness I've got my Panaracer Gravel Kings on. People looking at me weird why I've got a GoPro sticking out my mouth, but it's a good way to hold it. Desperate for a swim now. I just went past the house with four Lamborghinis in the drive, so there's clearly some money here. I think it's called Pevensey. Pevensey? I'm not sure. But these beachfront uh, houses clearly go for a lot of money. Right time to check in physically. I actually feel absolutely fine. I've paced myself really well kept on top of my hydration and my nutrition. So I've got no complaints there. Mentally, could do with more roads like this really. 
and less of the beachfront shared pathways where you're dodging crowds of people. But I'm about 83 miles in, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. The plan is to make the hotel by eight o'clock tonight. I was lucky growing up, I knew where the beaches were, how to get to them easily, walk, all within walking distance as well really. It's just mind blowing the amount of cars and people that have made their way down to the beach. And a lot of them on the road, you can see clearly trying to arrive, the beach, arrive at the beach after lunch. When they're already at capacity, kind of why bother? You'd have a nicer day at home rather than sitting in a roasting hot car, sucking in the fumes of everyone else in the traffic. Or get a Brompton and cycle yourself down to the beach. Maybe that's the way forward. Probably not good if you've got a family like me there. Based on the elevation profile that I remember in my head, it is pretty much a flat to rolling profile now all the way to Chichester. Today is a longer day, 155 miles. I was going to stay around Bognor Regis at mile 130 to split the days almost equally in mileage but because it is so pan flat it just ended up making more sense to get the mileage done today if I can and then it eases the pressure on me tomorrow. National Cycle Network 2 has given another uh, nice surprise taking us on this closed road through a wind farm and this basically takes us around Eastbourne I think. I think I'm mostly going to avoid Eastbourne which is a good thing considering the weather is still hot and there's a lot of people out but this is gravel bike territory for sure. And a quick check on the stats, 91 miles in. So about 64 to go. Eight o'clock at night, might be a bit touch and go now if I make the hotel for that time, we'll have to wait and see. I'm enjoying it, the pacing is okay and the heat should start to abate shortly. Well, it's only three o'clock actually. Probably got a couple of hours more yet. It's not too bad. Been in this forest and on this track for a couple of miles now. Absolutely excellent. It's probably not helping me progress quickly to my hotel in Chichester, but it's keeping me traffic free and keeping the miles really enjoyable. How about this for route selection? Actually, it's pretty firm underfoot. This is, lit, this is part of the National uh, Cycle Network, still on route two. I was almost in disbelief when I came through the Sheep Gate, but it's legit. We've made it to Brighton. There's people rollerblading, people cycling, people electric scooting. It's absolute carnage. People are stepping into this bike lane <laughs> like young kids as well. But we're making much better progress through this bit of Brighton than I thought we might. Literally what coronavirus, it's absolutely kicking off in Brighton. It really lives up to, uh, to its reputation. It looks like a lot of fun here. Heading through Shoreham, had a complete nightmare. Oh, I guess Shoreham Airport must be just behind these houses. Took the wrong way, had to write at a level, wait at a level crossing for ages got through it and then realised I'd gone the wrong way and needed to backtrack and at that point had to wait again to get back across the level crossing. The heat has mercifully gone from the sun now mostly so it's just a really nice evening and these beach fronts are a lot quieter than they were earlier in the day. Uh, this is lovely now just wheeling into Little Hampton Seaside Resort. Sun's dipping down we've just gone through quarter past seven in the evening I'm about 140 odd miles in, so probably 15 miles, about an hour's riding still to go. Nice smooth tarmac like this, which is now a lot quieter than the roads were earlier. I can have very little to complain about with the conditions today. Well, I'm in Chichester now just to find the hotel. Ride complete, 154 miles. Important to get some uh, proper nutrition. I'm, I'm sleeping down there somewhere. Well, a nice stay in the Premier Inn here in Chichester. And I got the half six slot for breakfast. So I'm fed, watered, coffeed, and ready to go for the second day. About 118 miles on the uh, route today. And it'll probably be a, a touch boring uh, and flat to start with. Cycle paths through the top of Portsmouth through or just south of Southampton to cross the water and then into the New Forest, which will be absolutely delightful, and then Dorset, which I know will be lovely, but will also be fairly hilly. Uh, so a hilly finish to the day, no doubt, but looking forward to getting home and having a beer this evening. 
and the weather looks absolutely ace yet again. Not a terrible way to start the day. Chichester, I presume cathedral in the background. Weather's absolutely glorious and again you probably can't see me because I'm heading west and the sun is rising behind me. But there's also another day of easterly tailwinds and the first climb according to my Garmin isn't until mile 83. So it should be a fairly relaxing start to the day providing the nav goes okay. Right, let's crack on with it. So this is all still National Cycle Network 2 that I hopped on in Dover yesterday. And it actually goes all the way down to St Ives in Cornwall. But for memory, it hops south on Hailing Island and then goes across the bottom of Portsmouth and involves ferries and things. So I'm actually, at some point, I start taking other parts of the National Cycle Network, keep to the north of, of uh, Route 2, I think, and then rejoin it in Southampton through the New Forest. There's an awful lot of this. Uh, cycle pathway and I imagine this morning will be mostly that alongside some quite busy roads I imagine but as yesterday coming into Chichester the cycle path was in better condition than the roads it was it was stunning and really wide and quiet so made some really good progress so hopefully it'll be the same this morning well Portsmouth ended up being dispatched with relative ease thanks to their pretty uh, extensive cycle network it does mean a lot of start stop as you cross roads and come to junctions and things on the whole it was really quite good it kept me out of the city anyway which is what I wanted I'm currently just out the other side of Fairham and I've got to cross the river Hamble hopefully there's a water taxi to do that that's what the National Cycle Network goes across, so let's hope that is the case. Hopefully if we have that crossing completed, we then, we do go up here into just to clip the southern edge of Southampton to the ferry terminal there and then pop across into Hyde. And then I am into the New Forest, which is definitely gonna be the highlight of today. Well, there's my ferry crossing. Walking down the slipway. It's slippery it is. Woo. Definitely one of the busier sections over this bridge, but I can see St Mary's, the home of Southampton Football Club. There's still a fair old uh, few cruise ships parked up in Southampton. And I think that's where I'm headed down towards those cruise ships, grab a ferry. Let's finally get across to the New Forest. That's the second of two ferries done, so it should be dry land from here on in. There is this tram line which a lot of people jumped on, so at some point I expect the tram or train, whatever it is, will come scooting past. The New Forest, we've arrived. Oh, I just absolutely love cycling here. It's so nice, so pretty, not too hilly, loads to see. And actually, if it wasn't for the fact that I know I'm gonna get loads of off-roads quite soon, I'd be up there, shadowing this road on that gravel track. There you go, being in the New Forest about 90 seconds and I see my first load of New Forest ponies. The wildlife here is always incredible. Case in point as I tell you that. Coming up to a junction and there's three cows literally sat on the edge of the road and go wherever they want here. Horses, the works. This is lush. I've cycled in the New Forest a few times before and what it lacks in hills, it can make up for in headwinds, not today. Beat wind on the beam and a perhaps a slight tailwind for most of the way through today. Perfect. Gravel cycling in the New Forest.
just miles and miles and miles of gravel roads through the new forest it is a gravel mecca here and the gravel kings are just about managing to keep on top of it actually there's been a few deeper sections which got a bit sketchy but by and large they're doing well the rears i think i've only got about 37 psi in the back it's pretty comfortable still on national cycle network two route two has been awesome I stopped in a pub in Brockenhurst. Terrible idea. Good food and a shandy, but it's killed about an hour. I should have just gone into the town and got a load of cheap food from Tesco and filled my water bottles. Never mind. Back on the road again now. And plenty more new forest ponies out. Just gravel. For as far as the eye can see. And it's good. What more to say? I'm almost out the new forest, I think, heading up towards Ringwood, and then all this lovely stuff will end, and it'll be mostly tarmac. And I think at some point soon, I break off of Route 2, because that stays further south than where I need to go to. So I leave the National Cycle Network Route 2 and pick up some of their other routes, I think, just heading a little bit further north into sort of Shaftesbury and across the south of Yeovil. And despite now, well, time isn't really against me because I've got front and rear lights I could go all day, but I'm certainly reaching that point in the ride where as much as you love it, <laughs> you're kind of done, you know, ideally, I'd pull into a campsite now, do a bit of wild swimming, have some food, have some, have a sleep, and then get up and go riding again tomorrow. I think yesterday's efforts are starting to bite, both physically and mentally. And not that I'm known for putting power out, but, I definitely haven't got much to give now. <laughs> Woo, let's enjoy it while I can. I'm very privileged to be doing this. Well, definitely out of the new forest now. It's starting to go a bit more uphill, so that must mean Dorset is not too far away. The roads are beautiful, but quite fast, as in fast for me, but also fast for the traffic when that comes along. It's not the busiest though, so I can cope and it means at the moment progress is good and I've just seen a sign saying Shaftesbury about 15 miles away. It didn't say about, it said 15. Making good time. Oh, I found the climbs. It was a bit worrying with 40 miles to go of a 120 mile route that I still had 3,000 feet of climbing to go and at that point I had only done 3,000. So half of the climbing done, but two thirds of the route done. <laughs> this bit was always going to be hilly and it's slow progress, but I'm out riding my bike and that's what I like to do. So I'm not going to complain. I'm going to enjoy the scenery. I'm into Sherborne. This definitely feels like I'm almost there now. 30 mile round trip cafe ride to Sherborne is a regular route of mine. So 15 miles and I'll be back. And I've got enough water to last, so I shouldn't need to stop again. Well, that's it from my corner of Kent to a village in the south of Somerset. 270 miles, exactly. And about 20 hours sat in the saddle across the two days. The weather has been epic and definitely helped. I've learned a lot about planning these sorts of things. Some bits about what I used and what I could do with. But most importantly, got some conditioning on the bike ready for the longest day ride and maybe a John O'Groats to Land's End, let's see. And I've got to see loads of South England that I wouldn't have seen had I got back in the car, gone up the M2, around the M25, down the M3 and along the A303 so it's been really good for that hopefully it hasn't been too boring I like to keep my video short so with any luck this isn't a monster but as ever gauge in the comments let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one